Hi there, it's Marlena from Pen and Purpose, and today I'm going to teach you how to use coloring sheets in Procreate so that you can color right in the app. When I first tried to do this, it was a super pain in the butt, and I'll show you why. But first, I want to show you how to get a PDF over into Procreate. And I have opened up a PDF in GoodNotes, so when I opened it up, I hit the little share button and then I shared it into GoodNotes, opened it up, and so now what I'm going to do is export it as a JPEG and I need to hit the right thing so I'm going to export this page and then I'm going to hit image and export and then it should go right into my save image here and that's going to go right to my camera roll. The reason I'm doing that is because Procreate will only allow you to use a image file. It won't allow you to use a PDF. Once you have created your image, what you're going to do is import it into Procreate. So I'm gonna select photo, and it's this one because we just did that. And so that's as simple as it is to get it into Procreate. Now, if I were to start coloring here, so let's say I'm going to use the dry ink brush in the inking section, which is my absolute favorite brush, and I start to color, you can see I went right over the, the line. So I could make this smaller and I try to be precise and I keep going over the line. I used to hate trying to color in Procreate because of this very reason, because I'm just not very good at always being precise. So even if I'm precise, it sort of goes over and then it kind of looks all wonky, but I have a good solution for you and it's super easy. So go into your layers panel, which is this little square on top of a square thing. And we're gonna click on layer one. Well, actually we're gonna click over here on the N on layer one. And then we're gonna select the blend mold called multiply. So what multiply does is it sort of darkens everything underneath it. And we're going to put something underneath it for it to darken. Now white is not gonna darken anything underneath it, so that's why we're able to use this as a coloring sheet now. I'm gonna be coloring on layer two because I can color underneath the lines with layer two here. I'm gonna select my blue and then I can color and you can see I'm coloring up on that line and it's going underneath the line, just like you would want on a coloring book. So I like that. You know, I still have to be careful here a bit because you know, it's a thinner line. And you can see, here's the effect of multiply, how it's darkening at that, like that. So you can see the pixels, but if you're zoomed out, you're not really going to be able to notice that. The other thing is you can go in and cut that with an eraser and uh, just get rid of some of those pixels with a, you know, a small eraser. So that is how I would recommend coloring, especially if you're coloring for that relaxation factor where you just, you know, want to use the marker or the, the brush to, you know, color this all in and you can use whatever brush you want. This is a great way of playing with brushes, especially when you're new and you're just trying to figure out Procreate. So if I wanted to say, you know, how, how does airbrushing, how would that work? You know, what would that look like? Okay. What about painting? How would that look? Let's try old brush. Um, that was huge. Okay, so that's what that would look like if I wanted to use old brush to paint this. So it's a great way for, for you to just try some things out. Another way that you can color in Procreate is to use a reference layer. What I'm going to do is create a new layer again, pull it underneath, and I have it on multiply so that I won't end up going over the lines at all. And what we're going to do here is use the color drop function of Procreate. Now, if I did this right now, it would fill the whole page, even if I did it and tried to do the threshold because there's nothing on that layer for it to fill. Okay, so I'm going to clear the layer. And I'm going to go back, click on layer one, the title here, and I'm going to click reference. What that does is it makes this coloring sheet layer a reference for every other layer that I create. So now what I can do is go back to layer two, which is my coloring layer, and I can drop it in there. 
So it filled too much. I didn't want it to fill that much. So I'm gonna pull it here and then I'm gonna move it over until it only fills what I want it to. I'm gonna have to start over with that. There. So now it should be at that every time I pull it in, okay? Now typically what I'm gonna do is create a new layer for each color, and I'm gonna show you why. I don't even know if these are gonna match, so bear with me here. Oh. Well, I'm gonna not do that. Okay, so now I have, I did not do what I said I was gonna do. So, you know, we all make mistakes. <laughs> I'm gonna do a new layer, and then I'm gonna drop this into that new layer. The reason I'll do this is because I might not like how these colors go together, and so I might wanna change this layer three to be pink, say. So I'm gonna take two fingers, oops. Take two fingers, and I'm gonna move it over like that. You can see a little checkboard on there. Oh, I can't expand that. And then I'm gonna pick a new color, let's do this one, and then I can fill layer. So I clicked on the title, fill layer, and now it's pink, okay? So that's kind of cool, and it didn't affect this other layer. So I can do things to this layer that aren't gonna affect this other layer. So even if I wanted to erase, say, let's get it off of alpha lock, and I erase, I don't have to be precise and worry about the blue because it's on a different layer, okay? So that's how that works. So another cool thing you can do in this color drop section or, or way of coloring is let's say I wanna color all these stripes in this pink color. I can select recolor and move this little, it's like a little plus if you can see it. And then I just tap on my screen everywhere that I want it to be pink and it'll turn pink, okay? So that's recolor, so that's pretty neat. I can also change that color by, you know, going right now and picking a different color while it's on this recolor function. So that's the second way of coloring. I'm gonna show you one more way that I do with coloring. And actually, I'll just keep it on this layer so that I can show you some fancy things with it. So let's use this little book here. I like to create new layers in case I mess them up. I'm gonna select the little ribbon S, it's like the selection tool, make sure it's on freehand. And then what I'm going to do next is actually select it by drawing along where I want to color. So let's just do this top part of the book. And let's say I want to add gray and I wanna do it with a texture. So I'm gonna paint with a cool texture. Let's say these decimals here. And all I have to do then, make sure I'm on the correct layer and those decimals are only gonna go, that's very vibrating. They're only gonna go where I want them to go. I did not like the way that that looked. And so I'm gonna pick a different color. Actually, let's just go with this blue, make it a little bit lighter and I'm gonna to change to these diagonal lines and then I can color on there. And it's, you can't really color anywhere else than where I selected. So that's really handy. You can also do the same thing. So let's make a new layer. I'm gonna unselect the last selection and make a new selection. So once again, I'm just sort of drawing along here. Hit the dot. I could also you know, select other things by drawing around it. And so now what I'm going to do is show you what I was talking about earlier with multiply and how I can make it darker by, let's say I go here, I'm gonna do an L to make it a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to color on the selection area. I forgot to change it to a real brush or I'll just use this one. So that way you're, you can make like a shadow. Airbrushing is, is nice for shadows so now just that that binding is sort of darker I could even change that a little bit by create a new layer and let's say I just want to have sort of oops 
selecting, let's say I want it to look like there's light going a certain way. Now I would redo that because I went over the line, but I'm not going to for right now. So there you can see it only will cover what color where I did a selection. So now it looks like the light is coming this way. So that's pretty cool. So you could do your whole coloring sheet with selection if you wanted to. So if I were to create a new layer like I'm starting over, I could use selection. And let's say I would like to color in this flame with orange. Oops, I, I dropped, dropped it. I meant to color it. So I'm coloring it in. So I don't have to be precise. That's what I like about doing this, but it is kind of tedious to draw around it all the time. There's a couple other selection tools in here. So you could, if it was a rectangle, you might be able to get away with doing a rectangle and then coloring it in. Another one would be automatic. So let's say that I wanted to color over this blue. I could select it, oops, select it. Why is it not working? Okay, automatic, select. And then I'm gonna do the threshold thing like I did with the color. And then it is now selected. So if I wanted to change it to this color, oops, then I could do that. So hopefully that made sense. I'm gonna do that again just because I think I might have made it confusing by lots of oopses. So I'm going to actually just turn these off. I don't need to delete them all. Create a new layer, like we're starting over. I am going to, it's a reference, so I'm going to just drop in the color and let's say that I want to change that. I could go to this little ribbon thing, which is our selection, automatic, click on it, and then move it around until it fills what I want it to fill. And then I could just change color, use my brush, and then color. So those are some different ways that you can use to color in Procreate without coloring over the lines. If you want to practice with this coloring sheet, you can download it at the link below. Just sign up and I'll send it over to you. And I would love to see how you color this. It's it's something that I created one day out outside in the nice weather and just was having some fun. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you have fun coloring and relaxing with your iPad in the future. Have a good day.